The reward for finding the killer of two Indiana teenage girls is now nearing $100,000. 14-year-old Liberty German and 13-year-old Abigail Williams were last seen on a hiking trail February 13th. Their bodies were found nearby hours after being reported missing. Police released a chilling recording of a possible suspect, which was found on one of the victim's phones. Police are hoping someone, somewhere, will recognize that voice. And they are analyzing this picture, which shows a man police believe is the possible suspect in the deaths. So far, he has not been identified and no arrests have been made. Officials have not ruled out the possibility that more than one person was involved. Paul Violas is a law enforcement and security analyst who has been following the case. And Paul, let's start with that muffled audio recording. Mm -hmm. It is muffled. It sounds distorted a little bit. Nevertheless, how valuable a piece of evidence is that? I think the first thing, Elaine, we have to recognize is the, the internal fortitude and the character and the resolve that this young lady had at this particular point in time, gripped with fear, had the presence of mind to have that survival technique inside of her to turn her phone on and start recording, first and foremost. Second is, when we really take a look at, at what happened here, when she's hitting that phone, she hit it at a point in time when she realized, I'm in trouble. So with respect to what was revealed, what was recorded, and what wasn't revealed, it's fair to say that the police revealed what they had, which was quality. We all know, and we all have cell phones, so we know that there are times when those things go on. Mm -hmm when there's just a lot of information or a lot of sound in the background that's meaningless. And I think that's what you're seeing here. The opposite side of that is that if there was more information of value, they probably wouldn't have released anything. Mm. So they released something that had great value and they're gonna analyze it, but the reason why that it was short is probably because she's in fear, she activates this, which God bless her, the credit for that. But at the same time, there's probably a lot of background walking air noise that they just delete and they only give us that one part. Hmm. I know we don't obviously have all access to all the facts in the case, but based on what we do know, do you think that this was an outsider? Absolutely not. Why? Um, and, and I'll, but I'll tell you why. When you look at the demographic of these two young ladies, so much of, of, of this particular age group lives in social media and lives on the internet. And I'm not casting aspersions in any way whatsoever. I'm just stating a fact. And this would not be the first time that we have seen criminal activity perpetrated by using the internet or social media as a medium of communication. So for those two young ladies to be in this particular location at that particular time and run across this particular person has far too much coincidence for me whatsoever. I think, personally, my gut's telling me after 37 years of doing this that they may in fact have communicated with someone who they believe to have been someone else of a different age and a different gender and may have intended to meet up with someone else that they didn't know who it was and it was actually him. Mm -hmm. If I had it, an answer to your question, that's what I think actually happened. Well, would there be a window of opportunity here? Obviously, the more time that goes by, you know, you have to wonder, is that then uh, more of a chance that someone gets away with this? A lot of people would say in, in past times, yes, mm -hmm. I would tell you that based on the technology that we have today, that's not necessarily the case. What police are gonna do right now, and you've got really top tier law enforcement working on this, they're gonna analyze their computers at home, laptops, all devices, cell phones, et cetera, for any and all communication. They can interview all students, all kids that knew them, who they talked to, what they may have heard, maybe look at their email traffic. That information is going to give them an awful lot of evidence that's going to far exceed what typical trace evidence would reveal at the crime scene, and that's going to lead them much further. In addition, officials have received over 8,000 tips. How do officials begin you, to even sort through that? You know, that is such a really good yeah. question because there are categories. All tips are important to police. All tips are important to law enforcement. But when you have a case like this that tugs on that emotional string, you're gonna get a lot of phone calls. And that, that, that first category is gonna be somebody that alleges that they have personal contact, personal information with respect to the victims or the alleged perpetrator of the unsub. That's going to be category one. Maybe somebody's gonna come in and say that maybe they have information about the crime scene or maybe they saw or heard something maybe next, next level. And the last part would be third party information and hearsay. The bottom line is the more that the person calls that says that they are close 
to the unsub or to the, or to the actual victims, that's going to move them higher up in the chain. 